Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the French Watch Collector channel. Today we have this beautiful lip Himalaya watch. Um, so as its name is like, uh, you can see it's like a watch that was made for a famous uh, French uh, alpinist uh, who climbed the Himalaya. So this model you see is uh, quite rough, quite in a rough shape. The glass is broken, the dial is uh, uh, a bit dirty. Mechanism like uh, we will see the case on the outside is skull plated, but you can see it's quite worn out. Uh, but the dial in the, the dial is looking pretty pretty good. Uh, I like the the kind of patina. First, let's remove this uh, very ugly bracelet. I think it was named the Flex or Flex or something like that. The Flex Flex. Or I don't remember the name. Uh, this watch you can see as an integrated bar. It's not like a spring bar like you can see usually. So this means uh, the, the bar cannot be removed, it's uh, attached to the case. So this was this uh, bracelet was bent around, so I use a pair of tweezers to unbend the part and uh, remove this very ugly uh, bracelet. It's quite, it's quite hard to do because it's, it's really small and I don't want to damage uh, I don't want to damage the bar yet because if the bar uh, breaks, uh, I don't know, they probably need to be, uh, it's like a, like a fully attached, uh, probably welding or something like that, so, uh, but I will not be able to weld, weld them back, so I don't have the equipment. So you can see the back with the lip inscription with the serial number, so let's open it with the rubber ball. And let's see what's the mechanism. Okay, so first we have uh, anti-magnetic. So you see inside there is some marking, lip, uh, and uh, and a number. There is a screw to remove the stem. So let's just get a couple of turns and we can remove the stem. Looks quite dirty, but no rust. There is something around. I don't know if this. I need to remove this kind of little fingers to bend them uh, to make sure I can remove this kind of uh, iron uh, bell on top of it. Uh, this is, uh, I think, an anti-magnetic uh, pocket if you want. Like you, they put this huge cover uh, on the top of the movement to try to protect protect it from magnetic fields. Yeah. Okay, no, that doesn't want to come. Yeah, he moved. So I need to use quite a lot of uh, force to remove this. Uh, it's, uh, I don't know if maybe because of the dirt. So wow, the entire movement with the dial is, is uh, coming. That was, yeah, it looks very dirty. You can see inside, like, like I don't know, there is dust or I don't know what's inside, uh, sand. But you can see the dial, so there is like nice patina to it. Like the end are looking very nice. And I think we can give it a, a good, with a, a little cleaning, we looks much better. Yeah? So now I just put the stem back, just uh, screw it back to so make sure it stay in place. Can pull it and change the time. So let's align the hand. It's kind of a bronze color hand. I don't know what's the material, but it looks uh, very nice. So we put a plastic film over to make sure we protect the dial when we remove the hand, because I don't want to scratch this uh, beautiful dial. And I use a version presto tool to remove the hand. It's just a tool that I have a claw that go underneath the hand and pull them up. There we go. Now is the hand out. We can remove the plastic film and uh, let's remove the hand very gently because you don't want to damage damage them or damage uh, the dial. And the last uh, stuff to remove is this little subsequent hand at the bottom of the dial. So this I will use. A different tool, it's like a pair of uh, hand lever, so you, it's like you go underneath the hand with this, it's very difficult to do. 
you go underneath one 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 point to go and we go both underneath and now i lift it up by just pushing down the the two little lever and the, the hand go, goes up here okay now he's out there we go so now the dial we remove all the hand and i need to figure it out how to remove this uh, kind of uh, outer case outer protection with this ring around so I will try with a screwdriver to gently wedge it out. It looks like it's moving. Yeah, it's moving. It's coming up. So I go gently around, take my time and everything. You see, it was quite a lot of tension. So we remove the first bit. Now we really need to remove this protection around the mechanism. There is two holes on the top. I don't know if it's supposed to be screws. I mean, yeah. Like you see, you can see, uh, it doesn't move. So uh, the screw, I don't know what would be the function of the screw, but uh, yeah, there is two holes with looks like uh, for, for to put screw in place. Yeah. So I will use the same technique, but this is much tighter than the ring that I just removed. I will just quite try to go around very slowly and turn, turn the blade to make it go up slowly, slowly, because I don't want to damage anything. Don't want to use too much force. Yeah, yeah, it's coming out like I can see now. It's coming up. There we go. Now I can turn the blade almost fully. And just want to go around very slowly. Turn it. I cannot wait to see the mechanism underneath here. Yeah. It's my first slip, so. Uh, yeah, it's uh, Lip is a French brand uh, that uh, disappeared for a while. I think it stopped in the 70s. And here is a mechanism. Yeah, you can see uh, Lip written uh, on a ratchet wheel. So it's beating. It's quite a simple mechanism, but it looks not cheap, but uh, like very industrial, let's say. So, but yeah, it looks uh, not too dirty. So as I said, Lippy was a French brand, uh, one one of the the biggest French brand at the time. Uh, they they did a lot of watches, um, and they went out of business I think in uh, in the seventies, um, and they are just coming back I think with uh, with some production in Besançon, which is a city which is close to the Swiss border. Um, so yeah. And this model, like I said, is a very specific model for for the explorer, like uh, the, the the alpinist. Uh, a bit like you have the psycho alpinist. This was a French uh, psycho alpinist, if you want, um, with the Himalaya model. Okay, so now I remove the dial, and we move the the mechanism into the the movement holder. And we can start. So first, we are going to remove the power. Looks like, yeah, here we go. Now it's waning. And I'm going to hold the click out of the way. Here it is out of the way. And I can release the power. You can see the wheel turning very gently. I'm holding the crown wheel in between my finger to let the power out. Now the power is out. We can start by removing the parts here. So first we will start by the balance assembly. This is a strange balance assembly for a couple of reasons. First, there is two screws. Most of the time is there only one screw holding the, the balance assembly. And I found this mechanism uh, very angular like it's like only straight line and uh, and uh, very sharp angles like only on the outside obviously it's round but in the mechanism it's like straight straight edge yeah um, most of the movement they will have like nice rounded shape this one is like straight edges almost everywhere it doesn't look uh, 
yeah, it looks very industrial, like I said. So Leap was uh, famous for being uh, not cheap, but uh, it was good value for money. It was not like luxury watch because that was uh, for the Swiss uh, Swiss company, like uh, like today. Um, but it was like the French alternative if you went with like good value for money. The mechanism were solid, robust, but uh, not too expensive. It was very popular like uh, back in the days. And you can see the mechanism is yeah is uh, let's say it's efficient like uh, even in a machining like they did not machine like uh, rounded edges or anything it's like everything was cut straight as straight as possible there is no there is a nice grain on the on the top it's a nice grain from the from the machine but it's not like a Cote de Genève or Perlage or whatever kind of finish that you can have on a nice movement is very simple but yeah it's uh, Industrial, it looks, uh, it serves the purpose, but yeah, it's, it's good. Okay, so now we are going to remove uh, the train of wheel bridge. If I manage to, yeah, something wrong with this, uh, I need to change maybe or sharpen my screwdriver because, yeah, he didn't want to go in a groove. This is a very tight screw. Okay, let's remove the first one. Now let's get the second one. You can see the, the watch was quite used because look at the crown, uh, it's fully worn out. Yeah, so this was a man, this is a manual watch, so this means the only way uh, you put power in a watch is by winding it. So you need to wind it like almost every day. So the people that use it before, you can see they use it uh, a lot. Okay, so now we are removing the wheels from the train. This one is a wheel with the extended pivot at the back that uh, uh, act as the sub-second on a dial. Yeah? So it's too long, I cannot pull it out fully. So I will just uh, leave, it, uh, leave it on for now and maybe remove the rest because you don't want to put any kind of force on this wheel when you remove them because you don't want to bend anything or damage anything. Okay, this is quite a, a tight screw. And I don't know if you saw, but these screws have like three lines on it. So the, the groove in the middle where you put your screwdriver blade and two lines on, on, uh, on each side. This means it's like a reverse uh, thread screw. Um, so this is quite normal to have reverse 3D screws on the crown wheel, but this has a reverse 3D screw as well on the ratchet wheel, which is quite unusual. So now I remove, if you want to go in, the ratchet, the, the click, sorry, the click assembly, so the click and a click spring, which is underneath. So this is a normal screw, you see, it's like, it's, uh, it's not a reverse thread screw, it's uh, coming the, the normal way. So it was not fully unscrewed, so I tried to turn it around, there we go, see, it was just maybe a quarter of a turn left. Uh, just turn it around with the tweezer. Now I can take the click out. And I can remove this uh, big ratchet wheel with uh, the lip on it. And underneath you see this uh, copper, like a kind of copper wire, it's like the spring, which is a really a nice spring actually, with this copper color. That's what the spring, uh, that's a kick spring. I use a bit of Rodico to keep it in place in case, for, in case if it jumps, so it will, it will stay in a, in a Rodico and not jump over the table or even worse, like on the ground. I will spend hours and hours uh, to look for the parts. Okay, this again is a reverse, you saw it was three lines. So it's a reverse threaded screw. So we need to turn the wrong way around if you want, like if you are used to like a normal, normal threaded screw. So I remove the crown wheel. 
and now I can remove the barrel bridge. It's only by two screws, two big screws actually. That's the first one. And now it's the second one. You can see the mechanism from, from this distance is uh, quite clean. After obviously when you look at it a bit closer, it's, uh, for this age it's, it's dirty, which is normal, but you, you saw the watch was pretty beaten up, like with uh, broken glass, like kind of dust inside or sand, or I don't know what it was. But the movement stayed very clean. Yeah? So I don't know if it's this uh, kind of cover which is on the top who protected the movement, but uh, yeah, it stayed quite clean. Yeah? So now I just use a screw blade to go in a little gaps to make to lift the, the bridge. And I remove the bridge. There we go. And you can see underneath main spring barrel assembly and all the wheel uh, for, for, from, the, from the train. The main spring barrel as well looks like very uh, industrial, like there is no finish to it. Sometimes you have like a sunburst or very high polish, there's nothing. Looking uh, very, uh, very simple. Okay, that's uh, our wheel that fall on the other side. Okay, so if you like the, the video, please uh, like and subscribe. That will really, really help me to, to grow the channel, to share this video to more and more people. And uh, yeah, I will really appreciate if you can support me on this uh, on this journey. Like I, like I said on another video, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a watch hobbyist. So this is not my job. I do this as a passion. I buy like cheap watches or uh, or, or a bit less cheap, but uh, vintage watches uh, on, on different uh, websites and I like to fix them. Like you see, for example, this clip uh, is like in very bad shape, but I really like like doing it myself. So I have a se sense of a pride when you have a watch and you can say it's me who fixed it. It's not like a watchmaker that I went to my local, uh, local dealer who done it. It's me. Uh, so this is because yeah, I, I really love watches and I, I, I even love more the watches that I uh, fix myself. So yeah, if you want to do it yourself, that's the purpose of the channel. I put uh, all the video online so for you to see how I do it and uh, maybe we we'll give you some idea if you want to start up this hobby. Um, yeah. So let's uh, move on because yeah, I'm uh, still disassembling the watch and it's uh, coming uh, it's coming along nicely. So now I remove most of the bits from the keyless work. Removing the stem and still the clutch and the winding pinion. They stay attached together probably because there is some uh, dried up grease. So now all the parts are gonna go for a clean. Here we go, the part came back from the cleaning machine. Nice and shiny. So first, we are going to put the barrel assembly, so which I fully disassemble and clean as well off camera. So for put a bit, bit of oil, uh, 9104, where the barrel is going to go. Go, now we come in place and sitting, there we go, sitting uh, in the hole. Put a bit of grease on the top where on the shoulder where the barrel bridge is gonna come to make sure it's lubricated as well on the top so both sides are lubricated this is the center wheel so we're gonna put a bit of uh, oil as well the same uh, in the hole from the center for the center wheel to make sure it's uh, stay lubricated so the lubrication has two purposes yeah to make sure there is to reduce the friction uh, because uh, this is what you, you want as less friction as possible to make sure the watch is beating properly and the second uh, purpose is to avoid uh, the wear because it's a lot of parts is going to be metal against metal um, and parts are spinning or moving some of the parts uh, very quickly so you just want to avoid 
uh, the part from wearing too quickly. Some parts, sometimes they, yeah, they wear and you have to change them. But by oiling the watch, so doing a service of your watch uh, at a regular interval, it will help tremendously to, to extend the life of the part. So that's the second purpose of the oil as well, is to make sure that the parts stay lubricated and the, the loss of friction makes sure the, the parts are not wearing as quick as, uh, as without oil. Yeah? Okay, so now we are putting the train of wheel, so we put the escape first. Now we are putting the fourth, fourth wheel. Oh, it's a jumpy wheel. Just need to make sure you put them at the correct place and in the correct way. Don't want to put it up and, uh, upside down. Third, third wheel. Checking which way it's gonna go. That's uh, so that's the way I think it should go. Yeah, now it's sitting nicely in the in the hole. And last, the center wheel. So this one is easier to put because you have a long uh, pivot on the other side, so it goes straight in hole. And now I'm going to put the barrel to make sure everything stays in place. So you can see on this barrel there is only three jewels. So this means it's uh, only taking three wheels, which are the three wheels which are at the bottom. Uh, the center wheels will be probably on the barrel bridge. So let's try to put it as close as possible, like to the right position. Because yeah, any movement, you don't want to make this wheel move too much or else they will come out of the, of the bottom holes and you will have to re-put them and realign them. So yeah, here we go. You want to put them as close as possible to the final position and now, with a stick you want to hold the bridge in place with a, a tiny bit of pressure and you want to move the wheels until they all fall in place like in their in their respective holes and when that's done you see it moving you see the wheel is moving it's not fully in place and it, here we go you see when i turn all the wheels are connected now so I keep it in place, I hold it in place with, uh, with the stick to make sure it doesn't move and I quickly put a screw and as soon as I screw it down it will stay in place so it's sure that uh, the wheel will stay in place safely. Okay, let's put the second one. Quick check, make the wheel turn and see if everything, all the train is turning. Yeah, you can see it's turning up to the escape, so escape wheel, so everything is looking good. So, next step, we are gonna put the barrel bridge. So, like I said, the barrel bridge is like the center wheels that go locate into it and the, the barrel assembly. So that's much easier to put because it's like it's not like tiny little pivot is big, so it's easy to align. You just need to make sure everything is laid down flat. And as soon as it's done, you just put uh, the screws and uh, everything will stay in place. I actually like this uh, movement. It's quite simple and quite uh, easy to. I think it would be a good movement when uh, when you start. Uh, if you want to, it's, it's not expensive. It's not an expensive watch, and the movements are quite robust and quite uh, well organized. So it's simple to, if you want to learn. Okay, so now I'm putting the the second screw. 
can see all the screws have a nice uh, polish on it. It's like very shiny. It's called a black polish. You can see like sometimes it's reflecting black or white depending on the light uh, it comes uh, on reflect on the on the screw head. I pushed uh, the nice little uh, copper click spring. Hold it flat with part of the tweezer and bend it into the groove. Just make sure it lay flat. There we go. It's in place. You want to put now the click spring. Uh, sorry, the click. The spring we already put it. I put the click in place. Just put some oil before on the on the pivot point and secure everything with a screw. There we go, now it's nicely in place. Let's just check if it's rocking on the spring. Yeah, sorry, it's a bit out of focus there. If I move my finger, it will come back in focus. Yeah. There we go. So now I put a ratchet wheel with a nice uh, lip uh, written on it. So we know on which work. If we, for if we forget on which work you are working, you know now. Uh, now you remember it's a lip. Okay. Sitting uh, flat. Just grab the screw, so this is a three line screw, so it means like it's river threaded. So to put it to put it uh, to screw it, we are going to turn anti-clockwise. There you go. Just make it turn a bit to see if uh, everything is turning. Just tie it. Make it turn again. You can see like it drives uh, the train of wheel, so everything is connected and turning. Uh, properly, so that's good. Next, we are gonna oil the ratchet wheel, so that's a pivot around where, where the ratchet wheel will come on. So we need, need to make sure that it's oiled properly with some uh, 9104. That's it. Because yeah, that's the part that will turn every time you will wind your watch, it will turn and it will turn at a good speed uh, when you wind the watch. So just need to make sure it's all properly. I think I put it uh, upside down the first time around. So just remove it and put it the right way around. And put the screw. Okay, this one is river threaded as well, which is normal. I don't know why they did a river threaded screw on the uh, mainspring, but yeah. And now, last on this side, I need to put uh, the screw that will hold the setting lever. Maybe I will put it after. Put a bit of oil first. To make sure that when we screw it and screw it is uh, turned freely, no friction. And now we can insert the screw. I I, there is two kind of uh, setting lever design. I mean, probably more, but like the most common, there is this way where you will have a screw, that keep it in place, and another way you will have a pin that you push, and the setting lever will be held by like a kind of uh, arm spring. I much prefer the the other design uh, because this uh, you will see when you need to put the, the setting lever you need to screw it from the other side and it's not really practical. So now I put some grease, uh, some uh, 9501 on a, on a clutch and the uh, and the uh, winding pinion. Some grease on the stem to make sure it stays uh, nicely lubricated because this is again you're gonna rotate, you're gonna rotate it a lot. 
for to wind the watch obviously because this is not a automatic movement it just came out just pull it back in slowly and push the stem here we go in a row it's fully located that's it Let's carry on by putting some uh, oil on all the pivot points where we're going to put the wheels later on. And a cannon pinion. That's the pivot where we're going to put the yoke. Let's put some 9104. Uh, I did not uh, film it on, uh, but I just put uh, the setting lever. It's actually too annoying to film it on a camera to, to because, yes, yeah, you need to turn the movement upside down by holding the, the setting lever in the right place so this is quite annoying to do so I did it out of uh, not in front of the camera uh, now I put uh, the yoke put the yoke spring which is like different design again it's like a bar it's like uh, I think you have a similar kind on uh, some Seiko movement uh, it's not like a spring like you usually see on a Swiss movement does the same but uh, it's like a bar and you see like it needs to come under tension on the yoke so now I'm holding the, the spring and I put the yoke in place and release the tension on the yoke there we go so now it's fully in place I put the rest of the mechanism The minute wheel and uh, hour wheel. Just to make sure I align everything properly, I put the the cannon pinion, but he is not properly in. Uh, I did not put. Yeah, it need to be the use of force because it's uh, friction mounted. Yeah, this is much better. Okay, now he's in. And let's put the uh, our wheel. Perfect. Now we're gonna put a bit of grease on all the parts, uh, all the metal parts which are in contact. So. This is between the yoke and the setting lever. Now I'm putting the setting lever uh, spring. Put it with one screw there. Please follow me on my other social media. I have a Patreon page where I put some uh, uh, different content for my Patreon and uh, Instagram account where I put some updates. You can follow the link in the description. Okay, just tied a bit. Put a second screw. These are very tiny screws, yeah. even for all the screws are tiny anyway on a, on a watch movement, but some are either tinier than other, and this one are, are small. Okay, so now let's put some grease uh, at the spring where you come in contact with the setting lever. So we are done on the setting lever uh, side, and we move to the other side where we're going to put I already put a uh, pallet fork after a uh, nice clean in one dip and uh, clean of the of the stones. Now I'm, I'm going to put the pallet fork cock on top of it. So we need to be in place. You see, we have two little pins that, uh, in the movement that uh, locate the plate, and after you just need to make sure. Now he went actually 
he went in straight away some tiny bit of luck now I'm putting a bit tiny bit of power in the watch and see if the pallet is uh, moving yeah you can see it move so it means that uh, the power is coming uh, to the pallet force so that's good now we need to set to keep it in place by putting the screw this is a very tiny screw as well yeah Here we go, now it's tight and nicely in place. Just check again. Yeah, it's moved freely, so it means it's, uh, the pallet is uh, nicely in place between the, between the two jewels. Okay, so now we put the balance. Let's see if the watch wants to start. This is really annoying actually to have these two uh, holes, like two screws much prefer when you have a design with only one hole. Let's try to grab it. Ah, Ooh, it's starting to go. It's taking some speed. Yeah, nice. So yeah, because I oiled the the, the pivot before, like uh, the pivot where you have the train train of wheel. And you see when a watch uh, is starting, it starts slowly because you you will have a lot of oil, and the time that the oil go to the right place. He, he might take a, a little bit of time. So what I like to do usually is I assemble and you see you see the with only one one screw I don't like this design because I put one screw that I tie fully so it means that uh, the arm is not parallel because it's uh, it's not perfectly flat. So let's see when I put the second one. Okay, I put uh, because I did not put maybe enough wine as well in the watch because remember I put a tiny bit of wine to check the pallet fork, but now I want it fully. It's weird because it started straight away, so let's I will unscrew both of them and I will screw them a tiny bit at a time. There we go. Now, now you see I put it back up so it goes straight away. Just make sure it's in place. Yeah, now it's in place properly. You see it's beating very well. So I think I need to go and put the try to screw them at the same time bit by bit to make sure the arm come uh, down straight, yeah. Screw the first one and I screw the second one. Okay, now it's nicely in place and you see when I did it one at a time, it did not stop beating. It's a really strange design because obviously if you do one first, you, you will have an uneven amount of force on one side compared to the other. So it will not sit properly. Like when you have only one screw, you don't have the question. You just put one screw so it's like an even amount of force everywhere. Uh, okay, so let's move on now. The, the movement is uh, fully assembled. I did a, a light clean to the dial. So I quite like the patina on this dial actually. So I put the dial back. I just uh, screw the, the dial fit screw. That's one side. I need to do the other side. They are very tiny screws. go nice looking dial I really like the dial okay so now we're gonna put the, the hands so first we put the our hand I did a light clean as well on the, on the hand a light brush on the, on the hands and uh, yeah it looks nice I like the contrast of the hand on the on the dial. So the hand is uh, is on. Let's see if it's uh, turning properly. It's not touching anything. Looks okay. Let's put a minute hand now, and we we'll do a, a full check.
it's very la perfect and it's perfectly aligned. It's nice to have this uh, dot because some, some of the watch you don't know exactly where is uh, the midnight point depending on uh, what's marked. Uh, but this one yeah, is very easy to, to see where is the minute, uh, where is the midnight point. Yeah. Okay, so now hour and minute and are uh, on the dial. So make it rotate to see if they are not touching, see if they are aligned properly. Yes, yeah, they are not touching. Let's see at midnight. Yeah, perfect. This is very good. Put the sub second hand, small one, already beating. Just need to press it to make sure it stay in place. There we go. Nice. See if it's touching. No, with the hour hand. No, it's passing just uh, over the, the second end, so it's fine, it's perfectly fine. Everything looks uh, looks good so far. Here we go, that's a new case, look with a new crystal. I put the case through the ultrasonic cleaning. So you can see the, the, the gold plating is a bit off in some places, but uh, yeah, that's part of uh, vintage watches. I don't like to repolish or redo uh, some of the vintage watch. I prefer to keep them as original as possible. Okay, I put the cover back. Need to align it with the stem. Keep it nicely in place. And this kind of uh, tension ring, if you want, I think is to keep everything down when we put the uh, the back in place yeah okay you see like you have a hole as well i need to align it with the stem okay perfect nicely in place fully down let's see if we now we can uh, put the case back here is the case back Nice and clean. So first I'm going to put a new seal around. Nicely lubricated as well. It's important to use uh, grease uh, when you put it. And as well, it's a special grease that uh, doesn't let the water uh, come through. Yeah. And now we put it, put it in. Did not polish it as well. I keep it uh, as original. Doesn't want to go. There we go. It's going to turn. Sometimes it's a bit... Uh, Pain to put them in. Here we go. Now the case back is in place, and this is the finished uh, product, which is looking uh, much nicer. And uh, I really like this dial and uh, the set, uh, the hand. Very nice looking, very nice looking watch. So now the watch is finished. Uh, let's put it on a time grapher to see what's the result. As you can see, the watch is uh, gaining 7 seconds a day, so that's not bad. The amplitude is a tiny bit low, uh, but the rest is uh, looking good, so I'm quite pleased for this, uh, the result on this vintage watch. So, if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and there will be many more to come. So, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.